Your desires, according to the Kabbalist, are God's promises to you. And yes, listeners, I did get that from my friend Joseph. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) This beautiful statement asserts that our deep wishes are seeded in us by the transpersonal. Something larger than us knows our secret purpose, and desire pulls us toward it. Desire is one of the great engines that drive psychological growth and development. It is one of the clearest expressions of our vital spark. It is a force that moves us out over the threshold of complacency and into life. It calls us forth to our destiny. And yet, we may have been discouraged from honoring or even knowing our desires. We are told they are selfish, grandiose, foolish, or unbecoming. As women, we are particularly susceptible to becoming cut off from knowing what we want. Perhaps we don't even know that we don't know what we want. Many women develop a pattern of ignoring their own needs and wishes, both large and small. Because women often orient to caregiving, our wants and requirements can easily become overlooked. Ignoring our desires can leave us feeling depleted and resentful. When we neglect our desires, we do not have access to the life-giving energy of the central fire. Learning to listen for the insistent prodding of our heart's desire later in life is vital to those seeking Mm -hmm. those glowing coals beneath gray ash. Oh, my. You know, um, what I'm thinking about, I'm building on your reference of Jung and the central fire. Mm Mm-hmm. And what he said was, I'm setting up mirrors around the central fire. Yeah. And one of those mirrors is desire. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely. One of the ideas that I love about desire versus appetite is that desire mm. is something that we discover inside of ourselves that may or may not be present in the environment. It's through introspection that we discover this yearning and a longing. So for me, desire comes from the inside out, and it guides us. Appetite often comes from the outside in. Uh-huh. You know, For instance, I've had a great big meal, and I drive down the road and I smell this steakhouse as I'm passing it. And there's a part of my appetite that's like, mmm, well, that, that would taste really good. <laughs> like, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I, I feel like I'm going to split my side. But my appetite can be excited about, you know, a stimulus. But the desire to become an analyst, the desire to become a mom, the desire Mm -hmm. to write a book, that's something that it's not like we saw it in the environment and we thought, well, that's yummy, I'll be a mom. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) But something really deep activates inside of us, which goes to what you were saying, Lisa, is that something archetypal, something... Maybe it's transcendental, maybe it's in our DNA, mm-hmm. something far stronger than just the whims of the environment right. activates. Right. Well, and, and Hellman talks about this in The Soul's Code. You know, that book is essentially all about mm. that, that desire that you come into the word, world with that, that you need to, to live out. And, you know, it's interesting because mm-hmm. I, I do think some people just feel it more strongly than others. Some, some people don't feel that propelled by desire, which I think is, you know, just sort of normal. But sometimes people come in to therapy and say, or they come into analysis sort of saying, you know, I feel like there's something I need to do and I have no idea what it is. Mm. They feel that divine discontent, but they haven't yes. found an image yet. Yeah. But that divine discontent the not knowing is the vital spark. Yeah. So the come feeling look for of the me. Longing. Come and find me. Right. I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm prodding you. Mm-hmm. Well, I love that divine discontent phrase, Joseph. That's a great phrase. But, but then, you know, the problem with going to look for it is that it, you can turn it into an ego task. Mm-hmm. And then that's, that's very difficult. Yes. Uh, I really liked, uh, Joseph, your distinction between appetite and desire. Uh, and what you just said, that, that Lisa, that ego goes looking for it, of like, mm-hmm. maybe I should change careers. Maybe I should go back to school. Maybe I should uh, join uh, some sort of a civic group. Maybe, I mean, the list is endless. 
that 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 is the going outward. That's the externalization. And the vital spark is in you. Which which brings up this very complicated dynamic between introversion and extroversion. Because extroverts will feel a longing, but if they don't extrovert it, then they, they don't have a relationship to it. So mm. Amazon is driven by extroverted feeling types. Oh, no. <laughs> Who are like, there's something oh, no. I want. And it's like, bum, 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 bum. oh, there it is. That, that approximates something I want. Cha-ching, you know. I'm an extroverted feeling type. So Just like, if you're... <laughs> it's unbelievable how many Amazon box happened my way. So sometimes we do, uh, as extroverts, we do search for images that might correlate with the secret, invisible, internal piece. And then introverts often wouldn't go that way, that they would turn within and watch their images and watch their fantasies and how they're talking to themselves. And that feels very natural, Mm -hmm. very normal. The, The difficulty is to assess whether you're an introvert or extrovert, does the image adequately um, embody the secret fire inside mm-hmm. of me? Is that, is that really, does that fit? Can I put the fire in, in that idea? And so we do try. So for you, mm-hmm. Lisa, when I mean, you really were like, the idea of being an author, these books I want to write, my fire fits in that. Yeah. It, and it likes living in that. So all of a sudden, not just you, but the mm-hmm. idea of being an author is also has heat in it. Well, it seems like we're also talking about the ego self axis. Yes. And, and I think that, uh, you know, so one of the questions, if someone comes in and says, you know, I feel like there's something I'm supposed to do and I don't know what it is, I'll often say, well, what did you want to be when you were a kid? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. sometimes that's, you know, it, it isn't a rational process. It isn't like, mm-hmm. well, you know, here's something and I can go through the checklist and see, does this fit? It's just more like that. It's like that that um, Judy Garland story, and and the there's so many other stories like that. You know, um, just you know, you just know, even maybe at a very young age. Not not not. I mean, I think there are people who find their who find their connection with that thing later mm-hmm. in life. That's I mean, that's true. Mm-hmm. Some people that I'm close to. Um, so it's not like up oh, if it didn't hit you by the time you were five, you're you're done. But I think it is interesting to say, well, what was, what was the image when you were in kindergarten? What was the image that you had? Just a way of saying that, you know, how did the vital spark garb itself in, in each, uh-huh. each iteration? Mm-hmm. But also, I think we're talking about Ian McGilchrist's work of the master and the emissary. Usually but I'm the one that brings that I know, into I know. And I was tickling your, your mind there. That... Um, the ego thinks, it's like, oh, I think I've got a great idea. Yeah, I'm going to go yes. out and do this thing. Yes. But really, the unconscious has sent the impulse mm-hmm. to, to go, do and be. Boom. And the ego is tasked with figuring out how to manifest it. Right. And, and that's the dance between ego and self, that the self needs the ego to incarnate the image in whatever way that it can, given the mm-hmm. resources that are available. That's great. I really like yeah. that, Joseph. Yeah. Because I think, you know, so we, we get this idea, we have this desire. And some people in, in treatment have trouble with that part of it because they can't mm-hmm. even fantasize. Mm-hmm. You know, so well, just like, you know, wild, you know, castle in the sky. What do you want your life to look like in 10 years? And some yes. people have a lot of trouble doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, but then if you can do it, then, then I always say, okay, now it's time for the compromise with reality, right. and that, yes. that which is Freud's term, and that's where the ego takes over. It's like, yeah. okay, well, you know, I want, I want to be, you know, if my if my castle in the sky is, I want to be an Olympic figure skater. Mm-hmm. Mm. Compromise with reality is going to say, don't think that <laughs> that's going to happen. <laughs> but there are environments yeah. where you could feel like an Olympic skater, <laughs> like. There are skating rinks. There are teachers. Right. You That's could right. have uh, 50 of your yeah. friends come and give a, a special performance for them. Right. Feel yeah. like a million bucks. Right. <laughs>